What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Cocktails in the War Room, episode 213. I'm your host, Mistress Carrie. Welcome to the War Room. This is the room in the house we've been meeting in since March 14th of 2020. It's the room where all of my military memorabilia is, all my family's military history, and also, for our purposes, where the bar is. So welcome. If you are new to Cocktails in the War Room, welcome to the War Room. Please let us know it's your first time. Let us know that it's your first time and where you're watching from in the comments. What's up, Mark, Michelle, Keith, Nancy's here, Jared joining us, Jessica, Betty, Eric is here. What's up, Ash? Philip is here, Elsa. And if you are new to the War Room, allow me to introduce you to my co-host who is aptly dressed as well. Wednesday and I have our matching Christmas pajamas on tonight, right, Wednesday? Can everybody see your PJs? Hmm? Uh, if you're new to the war room, this is Wednesday. She's the Ed McMahon to my Johnny Carson. She is my co-host. She hangs out with us every week here in the war room. And uh, we have matching pajamas. These are part of the family matching pajamas. I think I've talked to you guys about it in the past, but I'll rehash it for anybody that's new. My mom started a tradition, my mom and dad, back when my sister and I were really, really little, of buying us Christmas pajamas every year, my sister and I. And we got to open them on Christmas Eve, and those were the pajamas that we slept in. Hey, back up so everybody could see your PJs. And they're the pictures that we slept in waiting for Santa. Um, This was a tradition that started when we were kids, but it never went away. And so my sister and I have been getting these crazy pajamas every year on Christmas, and we still get them to this day. And so um, my family that I married into now, the tradition continues. And so last year, uh, because we like to bowl together when we all get together, uh, we got, I don't know if you guys can see, but they are bowling dinosaur pajamas and um, Wednesday got matching pajamas as the rest of the family. So this is Wednesday for anybody that's new and Wednesday needs to be bribed with treats in order down. Okay, sit, sit, sit. High five. Thank you. Wednesday gets bribed to do treats uh, and tricks with treats in here. And if you're a regular here in the war room, you know that once the treats are gone, she pretty much bails unless you guys send her something in the mail to spoil her. Other than that, she's like, yeah, deuces. I'm going to go play with all the toys you guys have sent me in the past. So um, I do want to let you guys know, first of all, if there's any technical difficulties in the show tonight, it's because the show is executive produced by the Wolf Pack tonight. So um, this is the first year in three years that my husband has been home for Christmas. And it is also the first time that we have all spent Christmas together. Normally, our tradition is is that the four of us get together the week between Christmas and New Year's. But I think, um, as anyone that's in a blended family will tell you, navigating uh, holiday time, navigating birthdays, all of that kind of stuff, can be a little strange when kids get bumped back and forth all of the time. And um, this year, you guys are very well aware all of the difficulties with my mom's health over the last couple of years. It's something that comes up in the war room over the last two and a half years really often. And this is going to be the first Christmas that my mom isn't home with us. And it's also the first Christmas that uh, the kids are here. And so we call ourselves the Wolf Pack, the four of us. And they arrived a few days ago and they're actually all right over there. They're sitting in the war room. They helped set up the show. Hey, shush. Just because you have a camera doesn't mean you just get to talk whenever you want. Shh. 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 And so the kids helped set up the show. So did the hubs. So a lot of people saying what's up to Mr. C and the family, uh, including Wednesday. Yes, that's what they call him. They call him Mr. C. That's his, that's his name. The kids think that's funny. Um, and obviously Wednesday always gets her own camera too. So there's a little bit of an in-studio audience happening here in the war room tonight. I also want to let you guys know, people with a Mistress Carrie backstage pass already know that, uh, late last week, uh, Wednesday's best friend Zero had surgery down and, um, she had a, a pretty significant 
uh, fatty, non-cancerous tumor kind of removed from her shoulder. And so we have been taking care of her and she's napping right now on the really good drugs. But hey, you're making a lot of noise for a co-host. I'm the host, you're the co-host. Okay? You know how that works, right? It's not the Wednesday. It's not cocktails in the warm with Wednesday. My name's on the logo, not yours. Okay? Can you sit down? This is, this is the last part. This is it. Okay? Sit. Nope. Paw. Other paw. Down. Can I have a high five? There you go. That's the last part of the Cookie Wednesday. You did all your tricks. You wore the pajamas. Very good. Uh, Mark says, what's up, Mr. C? Trina says, uh, welcome to the War Room Family Wolf Pack. Hello, Mr. C and Young C. <laughs> I love it. Uh, lots of love and, uh, and prayers for Zero. We love you. She's doing really, really well. She had the surgery on Thursday and she's got shaved. So poor, what, you know, Zero has a little bit of, of her that's colder than the rest. The scar is pretty significant, but she's recovering really, really well. And um, even though she's still on the meds, obviously, to help her sleep and stuff, she's eating again. She's outside walking around. So Zero's doing really, really well. And um, as far as I know, all the tests have come back negative. It was just something that was starting to impede the mobility of her shoulder. And so it was something that... Um, had to be taken out. Shannon says, in front of a live studio audience. Um, what's up, Travis, Elsa? Uh, Wednesday uh, uh, Wednesday has a sticker uh, that she's on. Wait, Ash, I can't understand what the comment was. Uh, the Wolf Pack, woo, says Mark. Double horns. What's up, Travis? Merry Christmas to you as well. So we thought it would be kind of funny if we... Um, Got Wednesday in her matching PJs. So when it comes to the PJs, we have now adopted the PJ tradition. And obviously, it's almost Christmas, and that means no PJs. So, shh. Um, so they arrived a few days ago, and it's been a uh, nonstop kind of holiday prep around here over the next couple of days. As you guys know, um, the holiday traditions, at least for my family, the anise cookies, we got to make the lasagna. We're going to do peanut butter cookies this year. We're going to do gingerbread men and gingerbread houses tomorrow night. We've also got sugar cookies that we're going to do over the next few days. So there is a lot of baking, a lot of cooking that's going to happen over the next few days. And I'm also working a lot of extra shifts, not only on AFN, um, but also on the, the network and on the Pike as well. So you can listen to the Mistress Carrie show straight through the holidays because I'm going to be on the air pretty much everywhere. So um, Shannon says, uh, happy solstice. Right back at you, Shannon. Uh, anise cookies. No, Keith, not anise cookies. Not anise cookies. Anise, A-N-I-S-E. The cookies rounded icing Still, uh, the, the colored sprinkle balls on top. Uh, Ash says, I was trying to say she thinks that she's the boss because she's on a sticker with you. Oh, okay. Fingers were moving faster than my brain. Yeah. If you get a mistress carry sticker pack, um, online in the store, some of the stickers you get in the sticker pack are actually me and Wednesday animated. Um, yeah. So she thinks because she's got her own sticker that, uh, somehow, you know, she gets to be, have an attitude. Uh, let's see. Mark says, Shalom to all of my Jewish friends for Hanukkah. If you guys haven't checked out Dave Grohl's Hanukkah sessions yet, um, this is the third year. It's something that started because of the pandemic and Dave Grohl got together with a music producer. And for the eight, uh, nights of Hanukkah, Dave Grohl covers songs from, um, famous Jewish artists. And, uh, yesterday, they released a cover of a Blood, Sweat, and Tears song with uh, director Judd Apatow. And today's Hanukkah session song is uh, Let's Get the Party Started by Pink with Pink singing because Pink is Jewish. Uh, not fully Jewish. I believe she's half Jewish. 
And so she is appearing on Dave Grohl's Hanukkah session. So I think it's really cool. Dave Grohl's not even Jewish, but he's celebrating uh, Hanukkah by paying tribute to Jewish artists. And the cover songs are always great. They're acoustic covers. They play funky instruments. Sometimes there's cameo appearances. Sometimes there's not. Annie Joan chiming in. Uh, Jason says, sorry, I'm late. Um, let's see. Jessica says, I have seen it and it is so interesting. Eric says, what's up, War Room? Anything Dave Grohl does is gold. He is like the Tom Hanks of the music world, says Brendan. Exactly. Uh, yeah, she is, Mark, exactly. Pink is Jewish. She's like a little Jewish, not fully Jewish, but um, her real name is Alicia, and she actually performed uh, her song on stage with Dave Grohl, and she uh, says, I'm, I'm, my, my, I'm a Jew. I'm, my name is Alicia. I'm a Jew. Here we go. And then she goes into the song and it's a great version of the song. So you got to check them out. They release them on YouTube. Uh, they've covered everybody from the Beastie Boys. Uh, they've covered Jane's Addiction in the past. Just some really, really great cover songs. So do you want to show everyone your PJs? See how we match? You want to say hi to everyone? Are you making pug noises in the microphone? Yeah. Wednesday has not hated all the extra attention and snuggling and the extra walks and all the extra treats she's been getting with a house full of company either, right? You want to say hi? No? Want to get down? The pajamas are coming off. Whoa! The pajamas are coming off. Oh, my goodness. You almost fell off the couch, Wednesday. Come here. Nope. Uh, let's see, uh, any new year's resolutions Heinz wants to know, you know what Heinz making new year's resolutions was never something that I did. <sighs> Most of the time at this time of year, I look back, right. And to try to acknowledge the lessons that I've learned throughout the year. And also just to try and set goals for myself for next year. And I think this next year is going to bring some, um, expansion of the company. Uh, I definitely have some plans. Wednesday, did you fart? Oh, did you fart? Was that you? Your butt stinks. Just so you know. Um, there's definitely a lot of goals that I have for next year. Uh, I want to, um, uh, expand the podcast a little bit, start offering some more features. I definitely want to start getting out more. Um, I will let you guys know that I have begun talks to take the war room out uh, in either March or April and do a live cocktails in the war room where you guys can come and hang out. It's in the very early stages, but definitely something that I want to start doing again. So there's definitely those plans getting made. That should get Keith off my back about when we're all going to start getting together because um, it is something that I've always wanted to do more of. It's just a matter of how we're going to pull it off, where, all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, Trina says, yeah, in Puggish, when is my mail call? Exactly. Uh, no pants party for Wednesday. Yeah, her pajamas are starting to come off. They're a little bit too big for her. Pugs don't fit into all dog clothes because their bodies are shaped like little sausages with feet. And they just don't have the same body shape as like a regular normal dog. And so when you can find stuff, the guys at the boat, actually, speaking of taking the war room out on the road, the guys at the boat made Wednesday this really cute purple hoodie. And it actually fits her really, really good. And so I've been trying to find um, a way to mass produce those hoodies for people with pugs because they definitely don't have the same body shape. Uh, Heinz says, I hope you come to New Hampshire, please. We'll see what we can do. I'm, like I said, I'm working on some, um, some tentative plans and I want to, um, they're not really resolutions, but their goals for the coming year is that I want to be able to start doing more events, start getting out and hanging out with you guys more. I want to start bringing back our volunteer initiatives and starting to really be able to do volunteer days together and get involved with, um, some of the big charitable uh, events that are happening when we can kind of galvanize the power of the war room and get the whole family together and go out and lend our support to some great organizations that are doing unbelievable work. So there is a lot of uh, hopes. I'm not even going to say plans, 
because there's no guarantee that they're going to happen. But I have a lot of hopes for next year. So they're not really New Year's resolutions. Um, a little bit more, you know, I hate to use that trite term like work-life balance, but I would, as the world opens up more, uh, now that my husband is home, um, now that the kids are older, to be able to start going on more adventures together. If you have a Mistress Carrie backstage pass, I always take you guys with me. Uh, we took you guys to Key West earlier this year. We took you guys to Wisconsin. Just got back from um, North Carolina recently. So to be able to start maybe going on some more trips and to be able to start doing that kind of stuff would be great. So what's up, Will? Happy Festivus. Do you guys know that that's 25 years old, by the way? The anniversary for Seinfeld's Festivus, the 25th anniversary, was actually, I believe, on December 19th. So cheers. Uh, happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Festivus, whatever it is that you're celebrating. Cheers to you guys. And by the way, I have an in-house bartender tonight. He makes better drinks than I do. Mark, let's go to Six String at Gillette. Trust me, it's definitely one of the places. To go to a place that big, though, I definitely want to incorporate some live music to do a show there. And right now, there is a run on venues. Bands are scheduling tours. Look at Metallica. They scheduled their tour two years out. So waiting for kind of the dust to settle um, to try and figure out what bands are going to be available, if there's a way to bring kind of a more national act in, or if it's something where we're going to maybe uh, offer a platform to some big local bands to be able to do that, I think would be great too. So a lot of hopes for the next year, but we'll see what happens. How about somewhere in Worcester off the rails, which is where we had the after party for the big gig earlier this year. It's right across commercial street from the DCU center and right across the parking lot from the palladium. They have offered up their space. It holds like 500 people. That's where we had the Pike Christmas party and, um, the dark desert Eagles played who were fantastic. Uh, huge stage, tons of dance space room, great food. So there's definitely some options of some places that we can go, some venues that we've been in communication with. Um, and they're definitely interested. It's just right now, uh, the industry slows down. Right now, bands are just scrambling to get their tour plans put down. And so it's definitely something that we're going to start looking into, uh, especially this is episode 213. So as we start getting closer to episode 250, as we get, you know, to episode 200 of the podcast, like when we start hitting these massive milestones, I definitely w uh, want to be able to commemorate those um, with live events. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Merry Christmas, War Room family and Mistress Carrie and the Hubster says, Paul, uh, what about you and Sully doing a tour? Would love to see Godsmack and you again, says Brendan. Well, I'm fairly certain that Godsmack is going to be touring, especially once the new album Lighting Up the Sky comes out, that they're going to be uh, doing a lot of stuff. Festivals, massive tour plans for the next couple of years. Then we'll have to see what happens with Godsmack after that. But don't think that I'm not looking into all of this stuff. It's just that a lot of, um, you know, big companies, radio stations, uh, promoters like Live Nation, they obviously have a lot more money than Cocktails in the War Room does to be able to get these bands to do stuff. So we're working on it. But trust me, uh, do we need pants for this party? You guys know the rules. If we're going to be out in public, you got to wear pants. Whether or not I have pants on here in the War Room, I don't know. Does Keith have pants on right now? We don't know. But when we do events out in public, yeah, you got to have pants on. That's That's been the rule. Um, let's see. Stay, uh, stay warm down here in central Florida, says Paul. Wednesday, where are you going? The legs have come out of her pajamas. We lost her. She's gone. Jonathan says, yes, wear pants. Otherwise, shrinkage. Exactly. So... Uh, lots to go over in the show. A lot of uh, music headlines. There aren't as many new releases coming out this week because of the holiday. And obviously, I don't want to tie you guys up all night. And obviously, the family is here. So I don't want to uh, be tied up all night with you guys either. But I definitely want to go over some stuff. So want to remind you guys about some big events that I'm hoping to see you guys at. The big gig is happening April 29th at the DCU Center. That's going to be Breaking Benjamin, Falling in Reverse, The Pretty Reckless, Beartooth, and Dorothy. Tickets are on sale now. That's at the DCU Center in Worcester. Mike Shu and I are going to be there for the second annual 
big gig. Details on this show and all the shows we're going to talk about in the show are available in the event calendar at mistresscarry.com. Okay. <clears throat> Cocktail recipe for this evening. Hold on, I had one picked out and I got to find it. Okay. I did this one because the weather's getting cold and uh, brandy seems to be something that like warms people up around this time of year. So this one is called the aqueduct. Have we done this drink before in the warm? I don't think we have. So an aqueduct is, and this is a lot of booze, guys. So I'm just warning you, if you're going to make these around the holidays, like careful. Three ounces of vodka. There's also a half an ounce of triple sec, a half an ounce of apricot brandy, and a half an ounce of fresh lime juice. You shake these ingredients together and strain them into a martini glass and serve and that is called an aqueduct. I don't know why. I don't know why it's named that. But because it's got apricot brandy, um, I thought maybe one of those like freeze-dried brand, uh, apricots that you could float along the top that might rehydrate or some kind of like sweet and sugary um, apricot candy. Not sure what kind of sugar rim you would want to do with this one, but... Um, I think anytime you're putting something like triple sec or uh, apricot, especially if it's got lime in it. I think a cherry is always warranted if we're going to talk about garnishing cocktails. Um, let's see. So Wednesday doesn't have pants on. No, Wednesday's pants are coming off. Uh, I cannot wait to see the big gig, says Shannon. Walter, Wednesday isn't wearing pants. Exactly. The aqua ducked up. <gasps> Richard Fitz. See, now we might have to start changing the names of these cocktails to like make them war room approved. Aqueduct up. Yeah, totally approve. So I don't know how else you guys would garnish this cocktail, but uh, Mark says, Jesus, that sounds like trouble. Yeah, good luck with that one. Seriously, everything has booze in it, but the lime juice, and it's only juice. Like, and it's a half an ounce of lime juice. I would assume fresh squeezed. It doesn't denote that in the recipe, but I think if you have the option of using fresh lime juice, you should do it. But that's a lot of vodka, triple sec, and apricot brandy. But I thought it would definitely be something that would kind of give you that warm feeling in, in here, this general torso region. So that's called the aqueduct. I thought it would be great for a holiday cocktail. Um, before we recap last week's podcast episode, I want to ask you guys a serious question because one of the places that um, we had planned to go look at Christmas lights, um, we had planned to go to the uh, Botanic Gardens and in Boylston to go look at the Christmas lights and the tickets are completely sold out, like through New Year's sold out. So I wanted to galvanize the resources here in the war room and see if you guys had suggestions on great places um, that are drivable, that we could go and see big, giant Christmas light displays. Something you either drive through, something that you can walk through. So if you guys wouldn't mind, because the fam is here keeping tabs on the war room, if you guys wouldn't mind, if you have places you would suggest, light shows that are great, places where we can still get tickets, if you guys can tell us where you've gone, put links up if you don't mind, just some insight as to where we can take the family to go and see some massive light displays besides the Botanic Garden in Boylston because those tickets are completely sold out. Uh, Stone Zoo, uh, those lights were cool, says Will. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Uh, Mark, where is the La Salette Shrine? Edaville Railroad could be cool. The Lancaster Light Show. Heather, is that the one on 117? That's the one you drive through on 117, right? Let me know, Heather, because I was thinking about that one as well. Uh, Elsa says... Which one's in, in Attleboro? Uh, Attleboro? Is that Edaville that's in Attleboro? Oh, the Isolette. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, some suggestions on... Uh, do you want to come to New Hampshire? Heinz, I'm not opposed to it. What I don't want to do is like drive four hours 
into New Hampshire. What's the place that, that had all the big ice caves? Because that's like four hours north into, into New Hampshire, right? That's, that's a lot of driving with them. That's a lot of Slim Jims. Uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway has a drive-through display. That could be kind of cool. Edaville, I think, is in Carver. Why are you flipping me off? Uh, the Attleboro one is great. Je- uh, does Gillette still have the drive through lights? I don't know. Just left the light display at Red Apple Farm in Phillipston. Jonathan, how was it? Because that one's not far. The Polar Caves in Plymouth, New Hampshire. I heard that was fantastic, but I've never been. Uh, Somerville has a map that you can follow for the residents that decorate. Now, we wanted to go to one of those like big professional like light displays with like the ones that get synced up to music and you drive through and they have like bonfires and hot chocolate. Like we really, really, really wanted to go to the Botanic Gardens and we just, um, we, I didn't realize the tickets were going to sell out as quick as they did. That was my bad. Uh, I heard Red Apple was amazing, says Christina. The Stone Zoo is nice. Um, it is going to monsoon on Friday. Yeah, I know which is part of the reason that we didn't want to make plans until um, we had an idea of what the weather was going to be like too. Because that monsoon that we're getting on the 23rd, um, it's going to be really, really warm, which means that like any kind of like sledding or tubing or any ski mountains that are making their own snow, a lot of that is going to get washed away because it's going to be in the 50s on Friday. I will tell you guys though, that on Saturday, we are going to see the Patriots game on Christmas Eve. So if anybody else is going to be at the Pats game on Saturday, um, we will see you there. But um, the fam has not been to a Pats game together. And uh, it's going to be the kids' first NFL game. So it's going to be pretty interesting. But we're doing that on Saturday. Uh, Jonathan says, I really enjoyed it. It was nice to get out and walk at your own pace. Only concern was the icy paths. All right, good to know. Uh, then it's going to freeze over this weekend. Yeah, so we're going to get a ton of water on Friday and then it's going to be cold over the weekend and things are going to get very icy. So uh, definitely, um, these guys are all mad Googling over there, I think. So the ice caves in Plymouth, New Hampshire, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Red Apple Farm in Phillipston, Edaville Railroad. Um, those are some really good suggestions. Uh, who are they? Uh, who's playing against the Pats? I believe it's the Bengals are playing against the Pats this weekend. Hopefully, they they don't throw any lateral passes. David, we're not even we're not even going to to discuss how the Raiders game ended. We're just not even going to discuss what may possibly be the worst call that Matt Patricia has ever called in his history on the sidelines of professional football. Exactly. All right. Keep the suggestions coming for the for the holiday lights. Somewhere within like a couple of hour radius of Massachusetts would be great. Um, is uh, Six Flags doing anything out in Agawam? Or cause I know they do the Halloween stuff, but are they doing the Christmas light stuff? I hope the Patriots win as well, Jessica, but we'll have to wait and see what happened. Ash says, that call was bullshit. Yeah. Trust me. I know. All right, let's recap last week's podcast episode. Last week, Will Turpin from Collective Soul was my guest on episode 132 of the Mistress Carrie podcast. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, Will and I got along great. Uh, Will not only is a bass player and has been the bass player since he was in high school in Collective Soul, he's also a music producer that works with some really, really good up-and-coming artists, and he also took over his dad's recording studio. And I linked to all of that stuff in the show notes of this week's episode. Um, uh, Let's see. Jen says, went to the Bills game a couple weeks ago. Uh, Again, Amarante's in Connecticut, just off of 395, lots of lights and popcorn. Okay. I'm assuming down 395, it's like down towards Foxwoods and uh, Mohegan Sun and stuff. We're up for a little bit of a road trip. We just don't want to be driving four hours. In four hours, we could be at Rockefeller Center. You know what I'm saying? Like if we were going to go and see lights, we'd just go to New York to see lights. 
And we are planning on making a trip to Boston after Christmas to go and do all the Boston stuff. So Jane says, I think Foxwoods has ice skating and igloos. Interesting. Uh, with the two different size feet, I'm not much of an ice skater. The balance is not my thing. So if you missed episode 132 of the Mistress Carrie podcast, uh, Will Turpin, I love the conversation we were talking about Dolly Parton winning a Grammy for covering Shine and how the band is trying to uh, collaborate with her on her upcoming rock record. Just the whole story about how Collective Soul kind of got together, that there's a clarinet tie to Collective Soul was, uh, I thought was kind of hilarious as well. And I went back and listened to a bunch of the new artists that Will is producing. And a lot of these up and coming artists that he's producing out of Atlanta are actually really good. So if you haven't checked out episode 132 yet, not only go back and listen to the episode, but check out the corresponding playlist because a lot of those, um, newer artists that Will is working with, I put it in the playlist as well to make it easy for you guys to track them down. So is Dolly covered in tattoos? I don't know. But if you look at Dolly Parton, you never see Dolly Parton in tank tops or short sleeve shirts. Dolly Parton is always covered, long sleeve covered. I have heard the rumor for years that Dolly Parton has a lot of tattoos. She talks all the time about her husband of like 55 years, that he's a rock guy. Is Dolly covered in tattoos because her husband likes it? And she just wants to keep that as something that only he sees? I don't know the answer to the question, but if Dolly Parton is sleeved in tattoos, it's the greatest rumor ever. And if she is, good on her because that's badass. And if she's not, it's still a cool rumor. I don't know the answer to the question. It's just something that I have heard people say um, over and over again over the years. And I don't know if it's true or not. Jessica says she has some tattoos. What's the definition of some? I don't know how many some is. Uh, Jeremy. Yes, he is. Mr. Boone is asking for you. Wants to know if you're here. He's your friend. Chiming in here in the war room. Um... Uh, Ryan says, what's up, Keith? Uh, Bright Nights in Springfield is drive through Jen. Did you go and see it? Is it good? Uh, Let's see. Maybe, yeah, Richard, maybe she's covering her arms because she's older and she just wants to cover the wrinkly old lady skin. I don't know. But she's been wearing long sleeves for a long time, even before she was older. So, uh... Uh, what's up, Grace? Hey, hey, lady. Uh, cheers to my Kentucky mule. Hope your Moscow mule is delicious. It is. Merry Christmas. Mm. What's up, hacker? Everybody's chiming in here in the war room now. What's going on, guys? All right, so if you missed episode 132, definitely check it out featuring Will Turpin from Collective Soul. Now I want to let you guys know who's on this week's episode. The new episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast goes live at midnight tonight, and I had a fantastic conversation with nothing more lead singer Johnny Hawkins. He is my guest this week on episode 133. I've known Johnny since uh, this is the time Ballast came out when nothing more first broke. Was that six, six years ago now? Something like that. If you go back and listen to episode 128 with David Draymond, We were talking about the concept of rock being dead. And what David Draymond said was something dies when it doesn't get fresh new blood. And so David Draymond gave a list of bands that he believes are kind of injecting new blood into rock music and evidence that rock is in fact not dead. And nothing more was one of the bands that David Draymond from Disturbed listed. So Johnny Hawkins and I actually talked about that and talked about... um, being on the soundtrack for the Retaliators film that came out earlier this year, that was the subject of a couple of uh, podcast episodes. Uh, We talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about um, how Nothing More has been doing a lot of work in Nashville as well and how he's planning to move there, as are a lot of other artists that have been on the podcast over the last couple of years. Um, We talked a lot about 
uh, songwriting and um, just um, the way that rock music is kind of going. Um, he talked about frivolous guitar solos, which I thought was really interesting. And Hacker, you'll be interested in this part of the discussion for this episode. Johnny Hawkins originally started out as the drummer, and he is still a percussionist. If you've never seen Nothing More in concert, he, there's this whole percussion kind of thing. Not only is he shirtless and shoeless and covered in body paint on stage, but he's always playing some kind of percussive instrument as well. And he talked about the skill set that one learns as a drummer that you can then fold into um, the skills of being a lead singer, or he's now learning how to play the piano. And it's something that he's doing. We talked a lot about the pressure for bands to produce like social media content and to kind of be influencers. And that that is something that is kind of annoying to him, but that he understands is the way that a lot of artists are gaining fans and kind of promoting their music and tours. And so one of the things that Johnny's been doing is he's been learning the piano and doing it on social media um, because it's something that I think a lot of people that either took piano lessons when they were kids or that have started to learn uh, how to play the piano um, when they were older, that it can be a frustrating and abysmally slow process. And so Johnny was like, you know what? I wanted to share that experience with the Nothing More fans. Um, let's see. Happy unbirthday, Keith, says Rachel. What's going on? Uh, as long as college stations play rock, and they do, we will keep getting fresh talent. John, that is true. But here's the thing. Radio as a medium is changing and shifting. And as the medium becomes more automated and less staff is required, are we ever going to get to the point where colleges are no longer offering radio as a major? A lot of these companies could, or a lot of these colleges, I should say, could shift that major to podcasting because that's where a lot of the technology is going. And so if they're going to start losing their radio majors, are we going to start losing really influential college radio stations? So if that happens, that leads right into what you're talking about is that once we start losing college radio stations, which I'm hope is not going to be the case, um, that's really going to have an impact on growing newer artists as well. It's also something that Johnny and I talked about when it comes to how a lot of the major record labels have been so choosy with artists that a lot of artists have been able to break as independent artists, um, citing examples like Dorothy or Dirty Honey that never signed a major label record deal, um, but instead decided to sign a management deal, get a booking agent, and start releasing their albums independently. Now, on the reverse, we're also seeing a lot of major bands who are getting to the end of their contracts. So a lot of artists, you know, would sign like a five record deal with a major label. And once they get to that fifth record, a band like Metallica is now an independent artist. Um, uh, Slipknot, this is their last record with Roadrunner Records. They are going to become an independent artist. Godsmack is an artist that is talking about how this is going to be their last studio album. Disturbed has said recently that there's the possibility that they um, are going to stop releasing full albums and maybe start releasing more songs. And it's something that Johnny and I talked about as well, is uh, how the pandemic affected everything, how they're still trying to catch up on the momentum that Nothing More had going into COVID, and also um, maybe starting to change the mechanism in which they release new music. Are they going to go towards a more single-based release structure that they want to be able to go into the studio, record a couple of tracks, maybe release an EP, and then go out on the road and tour for a while, and then be able to go back in the studio and work on a couple more songs? All of these things that I'm talking about are all going to change the way that the entire music industry is going to function moving forward. How that's going to trickle down into... Um, independent radio stations, college radio stations, how it's going to trickle into podcasting if and when they ever figure out a music licensing mechanism for people that have podcasts like myself 
to be able to incorporate actual copywritten songs into their shows. These things are all literally changing so fast. The, the way that this is changing is it's, it's another wave of change as it was when Napster happened in Metallica and all of that is that the industry like smells like teen spirit kind of changed music in an instant Napster changed music in an instant. And I think that is starting to happen now. Um, I think a lot of bands are getting into releasing collectible vinyl stuff, doing more box sets, uh, live stuff, being able to put these collectible packages together. But now that most artists are gauging success through streaming and not through actual album sales, I don't know the answer to these questions. The next 24 to 36 months, I think, are going to be telling for sure. Uh, Jen says, I honestly think, oh, she's talking about the Christmas lights. Bolton is a little better, but we haven't been in a couple of years. Uh, Roger Williams Zoo is a nice Christmas display, but you may want to look that up. Uh, I think it's a walkthrough one. Uh, the pumpkin display at Halloween um, is something, honestly, that I felt like uh, felt like a Christmas thing. It was awesome. Uh, the animals stay away from the people. Uh, Richard says, I can tell my 23-year-old sons their perspective that he and many of his peers tend to listen to music in many different ways. YouTube, uh, I myself, very surprised at how many youngsters, you, you're using the word youngster, Richard, um, are actually attracted to rock and the heavier stuff via those platforms. Well, yeah, I think that a lot of those heavier bands couldn't find a home, either at a record company or on the radio or both. And so they're using these new ways of streaming and social media to be able to kind of galvanize their fan base and to be able to tour. I mean, if you go back and look, Justin Bieber broke off of YouTube. This has been happening for a long time, um, but it's it, with rock and heavy metal, especially um, uh, it's, it's definitely having a massive impact on it. Uh, John says, I cannot stay, but I wish you well. John, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Festivus, whatever it is that you're celebrating. Um, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. The only place I can think of is in New Jersey, and I believe it's a park, Jessica. We are not driving to Jersey. That is not happening. So uh, episode 133 of the Mistress Carrie podcast comes out tomorrow featuring Johnny Hawkins, the lead singer and percussionist from um, Nothing More. And we had a great conversation. He's a really, really cool guy. I think you guys are going to love this episode. Don't forget, if you subscribe to the podcast, not only do you get notified when the full-length episodes get released, but you also um, get the sit reps every day. So every weekday, they download at three in the morning. You get the situation report, which is all of your rock news, entertainment updates, music headlines, movie, music streaming, all of that kind of stuff. But it's boiled down into five minutes and you get it every Monday through Friday. And it gets you just kind of filled in on all of the news of the day. You can listen to it while you're on the toilet, while you're in the shower, while you're making your coffee, while you're walking the dog, while you're sitting in the drive through at Dunks, whatever it is that you're doing. I'm getting my picture taken right now. Um, the sit rep is super, super fast. And then you always go to the show notes of the sit rep episode because all of the links to the full length stories are there. So if you guys are ever curious about more information about a story that I'm talking about, you can always find where I got the information from. So you can go and read the rest of the interview, read the rest of all of the information, or sometimes we're talking about products that bands or entertainers are coming out with, liquors, CBD products, um, limited edition vinyl box sets, all of that. You can usually buy them with the links as well. Um, if you're wondering where you can listen to the Mistress Carrie podcast, all of these places and then some. These are basically all of the major podcast outlets, but anywhere you listen to podcasts, just search the Mistress Carrie podcast. When you see this artwork, you are uh, in the right spot, but definitely on the big ones like Apple, Google, Spotify, Odyssey, iHeart, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, TuneIn, Player FM, Podbean, Castbox, Downcast, Beyond Pod, Podcast Republic, Pod Crusher, Bullhorn, Pod Kicker, Pandora, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Amazon, Geo Savan, and Ghana. What's up to all of our friends in India, Podcast Attic, uh, and Mozilla as well? So there's, like I said, there's a ton. Uh, now I did want to kind of fill you guys in 
on some of the stuff. You may have seen some of the graphics that I put up on Facebook. Spotify does something where they, um, they give bands, podcasts, all of these stats. Now, their stats are only for the listenership through Spotify. So the stats here that the Mistress Carrie podcast is listened to in 139 countries, that is all podcast outlets worldwide. What you're seeing in the center of the graphic, 35 of those countries came through just Spotify alone. So Spotify gave me a list of the top five countries that listen to the Mistress Carrie podcast on Spotify. They are the United States, Ireland, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Germany. So that's Spotify's top five. Now, one of the other things that I did was I brought up some other graphics that I got from Spotify because as we get towards the end of the year, I wanted to thank you guys because all... Now, again, these are just Spotify listening only. So if you don't listen on Spotify, your listens are not calibrated into all of these totals. But I wanted to show you guys what has happened since June 10th of 2020 when we launched the Mistress Carrie podcast. Not only are we in 139 countries, but on Spotify alone, 136 countries. Streams on Spotify alone for 2022 were up 674% on Spotify alone. We published 249 episodes So that includes the full-length episodes, the after-action reports, the bonus episodes, and all the sit reps all combined. 249 episodes. That's uh, 3.7 thousand minutes. Matter of fact, it's 3,719 minutes total. That stats up here of content this year from the podcast alone. Now, according to Spotify, we're up, we're in the top 10% of the most followed podcast on Spotify, which is just ridiculous. And that's all because of you guys. It's, It's unbelievable, the growth. I don't have the actual percentage of growth overall because there's still a couple of new episodes and a bunch of sit reps that have yet to come out before the end of the calendar year. So the first Cocktails in the War Room of 2023 will go over all of the percentages of the podcast overall. But Spotify comes out with these stats at the beginning of December every year. So this is year to year from December last year to December this year. This graphic I wanted to make bigger so that you guys could really see this. So this is on Spotify. Up 674% in streams. This is up 473% in hours listened by you guys And as far as listeners go, on Spotify alone, 290% in listeners on Spotify this year. So if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you are counted in these numbers. And um, it's kind of insane that the numbers, I knew the podcast grew a lot this year. I, till I got these numbers from Spotify, I just, I couldn't believe it. So this is from you guys listening. This is from you guys sharing the episodes when there's an artist that is of interest to someone that you're friends with on Facebook. This is you retweeting the tweets. This is you sharing the stories on Instagram. This is you uh, sharing the stuff on TikTok. This is you guys that we started here in the war room in March of 2020. We launched the podcast in June of 2020. And this growth has all come from launching the podcast with you guys here in the war room. And it's just insane. Uh, Mouse loves some Mistress Carrie. I love some mouse. What's up, mouse? Jonathan says, the top artist that I listened to this year was Jelly Roll. And if you were at... The Shinedown show earlier this year at the Xfinity Center, Jelly Roll said it on stage that we were his first rock interview. Back when he was breaking into rock, back when the song came out and people didn't know if he was going to be a rock artist or not, when people still thought he was a rapper, when people still thought he was just a country artist, um, Jelly Roll will tell you that we were the first rock interview that he did. And he gave me the credit for it on stage, which... 
you guys know I get weepy about that kind of stuff. And um, so for you guys saying that Jelly Roll is your top artist that you listen to this year, it's because of you guys. It's awesome. Uh, Michael says, and this is just the start of what is to come, we hope, 100%. Uh, Christine says, that's a lot of work done by you. Jen says, that's awesome. Donna says, you fucking rock. That's why. Uh, Grace says, so happy and proud of all you've accomplished it. You're killing it. Thank you. Uh, you've done a lot of work and we are here to support you, says Jonathan. Jessica says, love shine down and God smack. And uh, Todd says, yep, love him. He's an awesome dude. A hundred percent. So I wanted to make sure that this week I shared some of these with you. You can go and see even more of the graphics. One of the other graphics that I didn't put up in here that I need to thank you guys about too, that is up on Facebook is that Spotify said that, uh, out of listeners on Spotify, that I have been given a five-star rating for people that listen to the Mistress Carrie podcast. That is you guys rating the podcast. And I can't thank you enough because the more that you comment, the more that you review, the more that you give me the five-star reviews, you guys know how these algorithms work. That's how it shows up in other people's feeds. That's how it shows up as suggested podcasts that we think you might like. It's because of all the sharing and all of the five-star reviews. So if you've given the podcast reviews on Apple or Spotify, Pandora, any of the outlets, you guys are only helping to grow the podcast. So keep up the comments, keep up the shares, keep up the five-star reviews because you guys are the ones that are making this happen. And the bands are really noticing it. I've told you guys in the past that we went from the early stages of the podcast of me calling in favors with my friends to get them as guests on the podcast, to have record labels, band managers, agents, and bands themselves calling and asking, can they be on the podcast? Sending me emails, can they be on the podcast? And that's because they know that if they come on the podcast, you guys are going to check out the music, you're going to buy the concert tickets, you're going to listen to the shows, and it's it's working. So it's not just about helping me, which 100% it's doing, but it's really helping the artists, especially in the wake of WAF being gone, and there isn't an outlet for newer rock bands or for some of the harder known rock bands to be able to communicate with you guys out of their own social media accounts to have a place that they know in New England that they can come to be like, hey guys, we're coming to town. You got to come and see us or to launch new records or to talk about their movies or their autobiographies or their new alcohols or the bands that they're helping to produce. This rock community, we've been able to keep it all together, but it all started right here in the war room 213 episodes ago. So it's you guys. Uh, let's talk about some of the other music headlines um, because like I said, I want to get you guys out of here because we all have a lot of shit to do with the holidays. These are two shows that are coming up fast. Um, I'm going to be at both shows. I'm going to be introducing all the bands at both shows. So first of all, Alter Bridge with Mammoth WVH and Red. They're going to be at Roadrunner on February 8th. Tickets are on sale now. Wolfgang Van Halen coming out this week saying his new record is about half done. And um, he's going to have to get that record finished because not only is he going out on the road with Alter Bridge um, on the Ponds and Kings tour, that's the name of the new Alter Bridge album, but Mammoth WVH is also one of the opening acts for Metallica over the next couple of years. And so Wolfgang's got to get this record done before they go out on the road. Later on in February, Theory of a Dead Man and Skillet are on the Rock Resurrection Tour with St. Asonia, and that show is February 25th. Those tickets are on sale now. If you're here in the War Room from somewhere outside of Massachusetts and outside of New England, these tours are coming to a town near you. I just don't have the dates up here. But if you're interested in these tours, definitely go to the band's websites. They always have links to buy tickets. And St. Asonia, obviously, I always get that backwards. St. Asonia is also Mike Mushock's band with Adam Gontier, the former lead singer from Three Days Grace. Mike Mushock said they're going to be finishing the new Stained record coming up in January as well. And Stained is also hoping to do some touring in 2023 as well coming up. So a lot of shows have yet to be announced and uh, we're going to be pretty busy. All right, I wanted to remind you guys about this show, but before we talk about Bush and Candlebox, tomorrow on the Rachel Ray Show, Gavin Rossdale from Bush is going to be cooking a proper English breakfast with Rachel Ray. 
What? Yeah. Here you go. Bush and Candlebox are going to be at the MGM Music Hall coming up on Valentine's Day. And those tickets are uh, up for sale right now. Some of these tour dates nationwide, um, uh, Jerry Cantrell is also on the dates. But Jerry Cantrell is not on this date because he has his own solo date coming through New England that we'll talk about in a minute. Don't forget the new Godsmack album is coming up February 24th. The new single is called You and I after the first single Surrender went number one for five weeks and was knocked out by Lux Eterna from Metallica. Anthrax and Black Label Society are going back and forth between Pantera for Charlie Benante and Zach Wilde and then Anthrax and Black Label. So this tour is going to be at the House of Blues on February 5th. Those tickets are on sale the Foreigner Farewell Tour with Loverboy is going to be at the Xfinity Center coming up on August 5th. All of these tours are national. So if you're not here in New England, you definitely want to check and uh, check your concert venues. Just go to the band's websites because you'll be able to find the dates of when they're going to be near you. And um, 2023 is going to be very busy. Now, speaking of Stained, Aaron Lewis is also coming out with a new solo album, He's going to be on his solo tour coming up April 22nd at Foxwoods. We're also going to get a new Filter album in 2023. They've got a new song out called For the Beaten. The Dropkick Murphys have announced their plans for St. Patrick's Day, March 17th and 18th at the MGM Music Hall at Fenway, and then across the street on March 19th at the House of Blues. All of these tickets, if there's any left, are on sale now. Jerry Cantrell is going to be speaking of St. Patrick's Day at the Cabot Theater in Beverly, on March 17th. Those tickets are on sale. Blink-182, their reunion tour, sold out in like 10 minutes. However, all three members of the band, including Tom DeLonge, who is now back with the band again, the new single is called Edging. The single is out now. The band is saying we're going to get the new Blink-182 album probably in the first few months of 2023, which is uh, pretty significant as well. So the new Blink is on the way. Um, let's see. Soulfly is going to be at the Brighton Music Hall coming up on February 20th. Steel Panther with their new bass player will be at the Palladium on March 19th with Crowbot. Now Crowbot just had all of their gear stolen and some fans of Crowbot who we've had on the podcast, um, put together a GoFundMe to replace the band's trailer and also to replace the band's gear so that they can go out on the Steel Panther tour. So if you're a Crowbot fan, definitely go and check that out on GoFundMe. But Steel Panther and Crowbot will be at the Palladium on March 19th. Queensryche is going to be at the Palladium on April 7th. Those tickets are on sale now. And Rex Brown is off the Pantera tour all the rest of the dates through the end of the year. He is saying that at one point he had 104 fever, that he got COVID in South America on the NotFest Roadshow. He is on his way to recovery, but the doctors told him um, to take it easy for the rest of the year, and he also wanted to make sure that he didn't jeopardize the rest of the bands. And so he is taking the rest of the year off, but obviously is going to be rested up to be able to hit the Metallica tour with Pantera in 2023. Speaking of South America, did you guys see the crowds in Buenos Aires in Argentina celebrating the World Cup victory? Five million people showed up in Buenos Aires today to welcome Lionel Messi and the rest of the Argentinian team or the Argentine team, what's proper? Is it Argentinian or Argentine team? Anyway, so many people showed up that it wasn't safe for the buses with the players in the trophy, and they had to stop the parade, pick the soccer players up, and put them on helicopters to fly them over Buenos Aires. You guys have got to Google the crowd shots and the video of the World Cup victory parade in Argentina it is, imagine the Bruin Stanley Cup parade in 2011, the first Red Sox parade, the Celtics parade, and two Patriots Super Bowl parades crammed into one. That's over 5 million people. The footage is unbelievable. If you haven't checked it out, you got to see it. All right. Mail call. So we had a lot of mail last week. Wednesday's ears just perked up because she's like, wait, what? Mail call, my favorite time of the show. Um, so busy today on the air. So busy doing stuff. So busy yesterday. Couldn't check the mail. 
I apologize. We will reconvene next Tuesday night at 830. I promise you we'll hit the mail before then. So if you sent anything, uh, we will get to it next week. I'm really sorry that we didn't get a chance to open it tonight. Um, as you can imagine, the last few days have been crazy and obviously just trying to get the house ready, the grocery shopping. Uh, if you guys could have seen the length of the receipt from BJ's and the supermarket with all of the stuff to make the lasagnas, the cookies, and all of the food for the family coming this weekend, um, it's been a little nuts around here. So, uh, let's see, let's recap on the, co the comments. Cage the Elephant from Kentucky. They are also amazing. Went to Blink-182 concert back in the day. It was awful, says Jeremy. That is surprising. Uh, Travis Barker is an amazing drummer. Taylor Hawkins believed in him. Travis Barker was great at the Taylor Hawkins tribute shows. I thought he was fantastic. Uh, let's see. The rest of the year equals two weeks. I know. It's crazy that we're almost to the end of the year. Uh, Argentina will uh, was like, hold my beer. Yeah. Guys, look at the footage. It's unbelievable. Walter, check the mail, says Michael. Uh, my check is in the mail, says Jonathan. I will check the mail tomorrow, guys. I apologize. It's been a crazy few days. Good crazy, but crazy. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Want to remind you guys, you guys are running out of time. Now, I will tell you, it is still possible if you order stuff off the website for you to get it. Because as soon as the orders come in, they're getting shipped out. And I have elves. We have the manpower to process massive amounts of orders on the website at mistresscarry.com. If you're going to be giving concert tickets as a gift, don't forget to grab a concert and event approved bag, the clear plastic, either waist bag or crossbody bag, because you can't take purses and backpacks into concerts anymore. There's also the brand new fitted caps, the trucker hats, the visors are all in stock, the seven in one bartender tool, the new coaster set. And don't forget if you're going to have a Christmas tree this year, my balls need to be on it. The black and purple Mistress Carrie glass holiday balls are in stock and ready to ship. So you still have time to order stuff off the website and get it under the Christmas tree for the holidays. But you've got to get these orders in fast because you are going to be at the mercy of the post office. We can pack the orders really, really quickly. It's how fast can the mail get it to you. So if you want to get stuff off the website in time for Christmas, I suggest ordering it sooner than later. If you want to buy some stuff in person, I don't know what they have left in stock at Joe's Albums on Main Street in Worcester, but they do carry Mistress Carrie merchandise. They also have the Mistress Carrie rack. So if you're looking for gift ideas on vinyl, they have also got the Mistress Carrie rack there. And Joe's Albums, there's one in Northampton. You can go to joesalbums.com if you're not in New England, but you want to support a locally owned independent record store. Their store is great. And you can order vinyl right off the website and they'll ship it right to you. Box sets, all kinds of stuff. They've got great band merchandise, Funko Pops, T-shirts, collectibles, coffee mugs. Um, they have a bunch of great used vinyl. So if you're missing certain albums in your vinyl collection, you can fill some of those gaps. Um, just go to joesalbums.com. But they also carry some Mistress Carrie merchandise as well. All right, if you're celebrating your birthday today, First of all, I'm sorry for anybody that celebrates their birthday for the rest of the year because you totally get the shaft and you get overlooked and overshadowed by Christmas and people try to give you one gift for your birthday and Christmas and that's that sucks. You should be getting two gifts, one for your birthday, one for Christmas. But if today is your birthday, you share it with Peter Chris from Kiss, Alan Parsons, Jackie Fox, legend. You guys know who Jackie Fox is? Please tell me from the runaways you know who Jackie Fox is. And also Chris Robinson from the Black Crows. And I also, you know, we're always commemorating birthdays. Last week, we're, we were commemorating the birthday of the National Guard. Obviously, especially in this house, we're always celebrating the Marine Corps birthday. So, happy third birthday to the Space Force today. Cheers to the United States Space Force. It's your third birthday. Um, I hope you're out of diapers by now, because if you're not, it would be very embarrassing. So, I hope you had a giant cake. I hope the Guardians are celebrating. I don't know what the traditions for celebrating for the Space Force are since you're only three years old. Happy birthday nonetheless. And Keith, happy unbirthday to you. Cheers to you guys. See, Carol's a good mom. 
She says, my son's birthday uh, is the 26th and we never combined it. Yeah, that's a good mom. You don't combine the birthday. That sucks. Happy birthday. Space Force says, Will, happy unbirthday, Keith. Uh, sometime, uh, somewhere Maddie Blake is celebrating Chris Robinson's birthday. He 100% is. Um, happy birthday. Happy unbirthday, Keith. 100%. Uh, want to remind you guys, if you don't have a Mistress Carrie backstage pass, this makes for a really cool um, holiday gift at the last minute. That you can get a Mistress Carrie backstage pass, gift it to someone for the holidays. And one of the things you get with a Mistress Carrie backstage pass is we do monthly live streams. So I want to let you guys know if you have a Mistress Carrie backstage pass, we're going to be getting together on New Year's Day night. So January 1st, 7 o'clock, we're going to get together. I'll post the link up in Patreon so we can all get together. I wanted to recap the holidays. Um, I wanted to talk about plans uh, for the upcoming new year. So if you have a backstage pass, 7 o'clock New Year's Day night, um, you can also get a heads up on the um, guests that I've booked for the podcast so you can submit podcast questions. You get the updated travel blogs. I'll fill you in on some of the trips that uh, I might be taking in 2023 that you'll be able to come along on. You also get early access to event tickets. So as we start planning events for 2023 and exclusive concert ticket giveaways, and I am going to be announcing some of these giveaways in the live stream that we're doing on New Year's Day that are coming up in early 2023. So a lot to go over in the live stream on New Year's Day. But if you don't have a Mistress Carrie backstage pass, you can get them at patreon.com slash Mistress Carrie or click the Patreon button at mistresscarrie.com. And just as a reminder, here's all the places you can find me on social. I will let you know that in the next couple of weeks, I am going to be launching pages on some new social media sites as well. So I'll fill you guys all in on that in the coming weeks as well. But if you're looking for me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Cameo, YouTube, Patreon, all of the um, handles are here and all of the links are always, of course, on the website at mistresscarry.com. So there you guys go. We're ready for Christmas. Brianna! Hey, I was asking about you. Glad to see you popping in before the holidays. I hope school is going well. It's good to see you. I hope everything is good. You were worrying me that we didn't hear from you for a while, so it's nice to have you back in the war room. That's awesome. Uh, what's up, Penny? We know you're here too. Uh, let's see. Uh... I love that you guys um, are always chiming in and saying hi to each other. Brianna says, tomorrow night is the longest night of the year. Can we all manifest a better 2023? Brianna, absolutely. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I have um, a lot of great hopes for all of our plans for 2023. We can talk a little bit more about all of that coming up next week. We'll have one more meeting here in the war room before the end of the year. Um, thank you guys so much. Like I said, for all of the love on the podcast, those Spotify stats really just kind of threw me for a loop. Unbelievable. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget episode 133 featuring Johnny Hawkins from nothing more goes live at midnight tonight. Merry Christmas guys. Um, happy Festivus, happy Hanukkah to all of the members of the tribe from all of, uh, the wolf pack here in the war room. Say bye guys. No, actually, say say bye. Hi. They don't want to say anything. Say hi. They, they're giving me obscene hand gestures right now. Teenagers. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the new episode of the podcast, and I hope you guys have fantastic holiday time over the next week. Merry Christmas. Back to the kitchen I go. Bye, guys. By the way, Wednesday's asleep.